So in order for you to employ a man in Babylon, you castrate him just in case you want him to be loyal. So the idea that Babylon has in mind is uh, Babylon has an eye for gift, an eye for endowment. Babylon cannot give endowments. Babylon cannot make gifted people. But they have an eye for gift. They have an eye for endowment. And so if by any means they come and conquer your territory, you know, the, the Greeks will send the ecclesia to colonize you in your land, but the Babylonians will bring you to their own land. There was a template, there was a table of requirement for people that will be brought integrated into the administration of the realm. I need to show you. So first of all, they were castrated. Then they were integrated before integration into the administration of the realm. They will um, go to the university. Most of our courses in the university at this time will go for like four years, the engineering, five years, the medical and dental aspects, six or seven years as the case may be. But their university time in Babylon was three years. And when you come to take up a course in the University of Babylon, they will teach you in Chaldee language. So it's, it's up to you to go and learn the language of the realm. The realm is only educating you to use your gift to endow the greatness of the kingdom. Are you there? They want to use you are a prophet. They, they have seen it. You have access to communicating to a spirit being that they don't understand. In fact, you are admitted. The fact that you have that special advantage it affords you admission to the university of babylon now let me give you an idea okay are you with me i want to say one thing then i will stop this was what you needed to enter into the highest form of education that was available in babylon can we look at uh, verse 4 no, three. Let's start with three. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring setting of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and the princes. First of all, you had to be nob nobility. You had to be from the royal line. It means that you, you were privileged. You were homeschooled, the politics of your people you know, the education to sustain the civilization among your people you know. They must have invested in you. So Babylon now brings you into their territory and the first thing that Babylon wants to achieve is to break you and deculturize you and use every endowment and gift that you have to build the administration of Babylon. I know the last time you, you, you said you, your dreams are becoming prophetic. When you dream, they come to pass. When you dream, it warns so you know how to take up your fasting and prayer and to begin to fight against what is coming. Babylon saw it too. And Babylon is not against your dream. In fact, Babylon will even help you. We will provide education. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> will provide the education you need and to build it to its full capacity. Only that it will be used in any form, in any shape, in any fashion to advance the course of Babylon. You can no longer exist as an individual entity that is isolated from uh, the project of sustaining the glory of Babylon. No matter where you come from, when you come, you, you can come from across the lake, across the Atlantic Ocean. Once you land Babylon, 
they know how to break you and to rename you and to deculturize you. You become a Babylonian by philosophy, you become a Babylonian by language, you become a, a, a Babylonian by culture, and you not you even curse the sepulchre of your fathers. Unfortunately for Nebuchadnezzar, because he tried that among the Akkadians and it worked. He tried that among the Egyptians, it worked. Because the first time, are you there? The first time ever that we see anything that points to globalization was from Nebuchadnezzar. When Nebuchadnezzar parties, he parties for like six months and I'm talking about partying across continents. It doesn't matter whether you are a warden, you are a matriarch, you are a patriarch, you are a king, you are a chieftain. All of them were working for Babylon. You need to know the kind of might this guy had. The first time there was a singular king on earth. This is the, the kind of thing that the Antichrist will become. The first time that there was a king on earth that that the, the nations of the world were submitted to. You dared not speak against Nebuchadnezzar. He had systems, he had spies, he has people in different lands. His name was a terror even to the strong. So the moment they bring you to headquarters, Hallelujah. All right, let's see. When they bring you to headquarters for like two years, they'll be doing sorting. The reason for which the sorting was required is because Nebuchadnezzar wanted a certain kind of people to go to the, 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 the school, the university where he was chancellor. The way to earn a degree those days was that when you are done with your three years, you will now be given an opportunity to stand before the king. So he's going to commune with you one-on-one. -on -one, and he will be the one that will grade you at the end of the day, not your lecturers. I'm just giving a background. I'm going to be building on this, just piece meal after piece. Not too much so that you'll be able to take one lesson home per time. All right, so let's do four. Let's do four. I have, I'll stop at when it's 12 minutes to go. So I have like five minutes left. It's a children in whom was no blemish, but well favored. Like for me now, I was born with facial palsy seven. It was in London that an ophthalmologist told me, this is facial palsy seven. What? Facial what? He said, yeah, facial palsy seven. That, that's what. So I have a blemish, so I cannot stand before... Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science. And such. You can have all this, but you may not have the stature to stand before the king. Because the objective is that after your training, you'll be given an opportunity to stand before the king. So if, even if you are skillful, you have no blemish, you are well favored, you are skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge, you understand science. If the guys that do sorting, the final level of sorting, if they check you and see your height, you're not tall enough. Short men cannot stand before nobody. Such as have the ability. You see, if you don't have the endowment, don't worry. You, you, don't, you don't have a chance in Babylon such as had the ability and there were five things that the king would do to enhance any little seed of potential you have in your vessel number one give me the next verse verse five as i try to run quickly yeah, no go back go back go back now yeah oh my you the part b of chapter four okay leave it there First of all, he would teach them the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. That's the first investment. You will need to learn 
through the instrumentality of a new language. And we have so many languages, just like uh, in, uh, in programming, the languages are evolving. Those days were just visual, basic, and, and Java. Now we have stuff like, I hear stuff like Python, and it's confusing. So uh, the, the, the language is, uh, is evolving. And the language is, is evolving. So there are many languages right now. And we also have the language of pornography and lust that can be used to educate someone. And the similitude of that individual after five years of participation is no longer as it was before the experience. So we, we have languages that, that are used to shape men. We have languages that are used to break convictions. We have languages that are used to manipulate the destinies of men and then make them such creatures that are suitable for adorning the glories of Babylon. All right, so they will teach you learning and teach you language. That's one, two. Go on. The king will give you his meat. The third investment is that the king will make his meat, the same quality of meat that the king eats, will be made available to you. The king will also give you a portion of the wine that he drank. So the learning language, meat. These are deculturizing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I will speak in parables tonight. If we have time, we will try to interpret subsequently. So he will give you his meat. He will give you the wine that he drank. So nourishing them three years. So the university time is for three years. That at the end thereof, there might stand before the chancellor of the university for assessment. Jump to verse 8. Let me make a stand. And then I'll stop for the night. Verse 8. If you notice, there were five levels of development that will take place. Only two levels, only two among these five levels of development were contrary to the ways of God. Now, they, they succeeded with the Akkadians, succeeded with the Egyptians. The problem was that they now brought the Jews. That was the problem. The first time Nebuchadnezzar encountered the problem was when he went and brought the Jews. Because if you reverse engineer that, these guys were now the Ecclesia. Hallelujah. And their job in Babylon, their job description, they, yes, they, they castrated them. They, they even changed their names. And the names they gave to Daniel, to Shadrach, to Misha, to, to, to Abednego, were the names of their deities. They had already aligned them through their names to the stars that they are supposed to reflect. When Daniel and the other guys took inventory of the civilization, the Bible says Daniel proposed in his heart that he should not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. So he learned the language. He went to the school. But he rejected the meat. And he rejected the wine that he drank. So we are going to go into meat and wine for tonight. That is the doctrine of Babylon and the spirit of Babylon. You know, ah, my teaching time is over. I want us to pray a little. He <laughs> ah, said, be ye not drunk with wine wherein it is excess. Meanwhile, stop there, stop there. Stop there. He used a Greek word that I need to pull out quickly. He says, see that you do not walk circumspectly. Oh my. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time. Because the days are you. Wow. 
once upon a time, there was a panel that was set up in the city of Port Harcourt in Nigeria. Port Harcourt is southern Nigeria. So the people that were eligible for this interview were sit seated in the open hall and the interview was taking place in the secret room. The secretary came out of the secret room to call people for the interview. And then he came out, she came out and saw the first guy was looking exactly like the chairman of the interview hall. He asked him his name, he gave a certain name, he went back and said, chairman, there's somebody outside, a young guy, he looks exactly like you. He said, What's his name? He mentioned the name, there was no connection. And she insisted, no, this one looks... Okay, they had to delay the interview because the secretary is a very honorable woman. So the guy, okay, all right, okay, 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 bring this guy in. And interviewed the guy and found out that the guy was his son. That when he, there's something they call youth service in Nigeria. When you finish your university, you go, you are posted somewhere for youth service. So he thought he... he he looked upon a damsel in that place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, as part of uh, his uh, sojourning in the land, and he left something that was alive in. <laughs> you know why I brought this story? I, 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 it, it required courage to bring this story. All right? The reason why I brought this story was because Paul says, see that you walk circumspect that word circumspect is the same kind of word that is used for for navigation on the sea that in order for you to arrive at the destination that you, oh my god see my time is here. in order for you to arrive at at your destiny your preferred destination you will need to use the intelligence that the compass gives you the guy was not circumspect in his journey. So he saw what he produced and he denied it. <laughs> so he said, if you are not circumspect, at the end of the day, in final analysis, you will be termed a fool and not wise. That's the first thing he said. The second instruction he gave was that we will need to redeem the time. And the reason for which he said we need to redeem the time was obvious. He said because of the days. The days are not good days. The days are what? In the Greek, there are two words for time. And I know you know that. Chronos time, that's where chronological time comes from. Then karyos time, that is the opportune time. Mm. You are following me now. I can feel it. Uh, do you know? that Satan will not fight you during your chronological time. He doesn't mind you trying to cultivate. He doesn't mind you going to the farm and trying to cultivate the farm, even planting on the farm. But when it comes to harvest time, where you're supposed to have return on investment, <laughs> then demons will show up. That's what he means by the days are evil. Oh, you're not with me. Now, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me.